All right, some credible leaks have come out regarding the MPD report uh, from last month. Now, we've already talked about the overall sales. We know that, like, as an example, uh, Marvel's Avengers was the best-selling game of the uh, of the of the month. We had Mario 3D All-Stars at number two. We had Switch as number one in terms of hardware. But we actually have some fairly exact numbers coming in from the MPD thanks to a leak. Now, you might wonder, why don't we get the numbers? Well, a while ago, the numbers were locked down specifically by behind an NDA at the request of uh, companies selling this stuff. Nintendo was actually one of the companies that requested this. They didn't want the public data out there for one reason or another. So the MPD uh, introduced an NDA to people who have access to the information who do see the numbers, but they can't actually give us those numbers or they get in trouble. Well, somebody broke NDA uh, and based on the people I've talked to that do have access to the numbers, well, they won't tell me the exact figures. They have looked at this leak and said, <laughs> funny it's pretty much spot on those are exact quotes sent to me so uh yeah somebody broke nda i don't know who but it happened and since it happened we're going to be talking about it because uh oh boy uh the september numbers are pretty pretty interesting so here is uh how how the numbers kind of break out here so hardware the Nintendo Switch was number one. It sold 670,000 units in North America. 160,000 PlayStation 4s and Xbox One was at 91,000. So, yeah, Switch just dominating the entire month. I mean, if you look at the averages on that, uh, I'm just kind of doing the math quickly in my head here. Um, it's it's a lot. Uh, per week, you know, we're looking at something like 167 thousand something like that 168,000 uh just in, per week that is a ton of units selling per week for switch uh insane likely backloaded a bit with 3d all-stars now the, the the actual software sales are where things get extremely interesting because if you remember previously marvel's avengers was the number one seller well it's total physical sales because because we, we're looking at some physical numbers only here are 450,000 units Mario 3D All-Stars destroyed that in terms of physical sales. Now, it's important to note the charts don't actually track uh, digital sales for Nintendo games. Nintendo does not provide that data to the MPD group. So we only have physical sales. Well, Mario 3D All-Stars sold 1,165,000 units in the United States uh, last month, uh, which crushes Marvel Avengers physical sales, which was a multi-platform game. The difference being that Marvel's Avengers outsold it overall uh, when digital sales are included. But this is the caveat. We don't have digital sales for Super Mario 3D All-Stars. So in reality, if we throw in digital sales counted with 3D All-Stars, we can pretty safely presume that Super Mario 3D All-Stars was technically the best-selling game in September, and it probably wasn't even close. I mean, the number three game, Animal Crossing, you know, sold 180,000 physically. Who knows how many in addition digitally. Marvel's Avengers obviously had a massive digital push here because uh, over half the sales of that game clearly were done digitally. This also shows uh, kind of a market shift between Nintendo uh, and maybe some of these third-party games where they are starting to see more digital sales than physical sales. That's something to pay attention to as we head in the next generation here but super mario 3d all-stars was also something that was going to have a high physical sale count simply because well that's kind of a collector's item it's a limited availability thing so there's a collector's value associated with that that uh you know fear of missing out so Super Mario 3D All-Stars was number one physically, but Marvel's Avenger edged it out when you include digital. If you include digital for 3D All-Stars, it's likely at number one. Animal Crossing obviously sitting there at number three. So this is uh, a really, really fun uh, thing to look at. I love looking at data. I love examining data, extrapolating things from it. As an example, PlayStation 4 selling 160,000 units. Uh, while that's not a ton in comparison to Switch, uh, that's still higher than I figured. I thought I thought for sure PlayStation 4 and Xbox would both be under 100,000. Instead, only the Xbox is under 100,000, whereas uh, PlayStation still kind of holding steady in there uh, as we get closer and closer to the holidays. I expect the sales to really dip off, obviously starting November, because people are going to want to get their hands on a PlayStation 5. Now there's going to be some just absolutely insane deals on this old hardware for the holidays. I mean, you'll be able to get a PlayStation 4 Pro if they're even still making them at this point. Uh, you'll be able to probably get that for like 200 bucks this holiday. It's going to be dirt 
cheap. And so PlayStation 4 will probably still have a decent holiday period. Switch is going to outsell PlayStation 4 and Xbox One this holiday. That's not a doubt. The question is, can Switch continue its sales thing and outsell uh, the uh, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? The one thing working in Nintendo's favor uh, is that now that they are getting kind of back to regular stock, they can actually overstock for the holidays and have more Switches available than there are PlayStation 5s and Xbox Series Xs and Ss. So it could just win by sheer fact that it'll be easier to get a Switch than it will be to get those next-gen platforms this holiday. But you never know. Launch months are usually huge. Uh, usually see over a million sales, uh, you know, sometimes a couple million sales for launch units during launch month. So it, it'll be interesting to see, can Switch actually top that in the holidays? Can they get to 2 or 3 million in November? I don't know. So it's going to be very interesting to see how well Switch competes. Uh, and I hope, like, you know, someone broke NDA to leak these numbers. If someone was going to break NDA, I'd want November's numbers leaked because this is going to be a very interesting holiday when you have PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S, S, and Switch. And here's the thing. You might be like, well, it's really only compelling with PlayStation 5 and Switch. This is North America. This is the number one market for Xbox. So the Xbox Series X slash S should actually have really good performance this November, even though there's not a killer game uh, right now. So if some people argue there's not a killer game on the other side, since Miles Morales is cross-gen, Demon's Souls is a remaster, not a new game. I get it, or a remake or whatever. I get it, it's not a brand new game. Uh, but PlayStation has some stuff coming down the pipeline. Obviously, Microsoft does as well, especially after their purchase of uh, ZeniMax and you know id Software and Bethesda and all, all the associated studios. So you know there's going to be some big games coming from uh, Microsoft besides just Halo and Fable down the road. Anyways, I'm pretty excited about this. I like looking at the numbers. You guys, let me know what you think of the numbers as well. Um, you know, for for those for those who don't know, like September 2020 was a better month overall. We talked about these numbers before. 10% higher uh, in terms of just overall money coming in. 4.3 billion um and you know spending overall this year is up like 21 percent over 2019 so things are just doing really really well uh but remember marvel's avengers was technically the best-selling title of september uh but but a lot of digital sales involved in that a lot of digital sales 3d all-stars was was likely the number one seller if if they were able to include uh, Nintendo's own data for digital. And I know a lot of people own it digitally. I own it digitally. So uh, you guys have to let me know what you think about this. Is this a good debut for Mario 3D All-Stars? Remember, this is actually one of the best debuts in uh, 3D Mario history. So uh, it's like literally, I think, right behind Galaxy. I think Galaxy had a slightly higher debut. So like, yeah, dude, it's, it's up there for some of the best 3D Mario debuts of all time. Obviously, it's a collection pack of three of the best Mario games of all time, so that's not really surprising. And Galaxy's involved in it again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Switch killing it, man. 670,000 units. Uh, and hey, you know, now we have October coming. You know, we, have a, we actually have a new game coming this month. I don't think Pikmin 3 Deluxe is going to push sales in the same way that 3D All-Stars does. But this holiday, Age of Calamity, combined with Animal Crossing's first holiday, combined with 3D All-Stars' only holiday, uh, it's going to be... Nintendo's going to be doing some cooking here coming up, Do, doing some big cooking. Hopefully, we can get some big third-party releases um, slated as well. You know, I, In fact, first-party-wise, Bravely Default 2 has got to come at some point, right? It's supposed to come this year, but then uh, anyways, I, you can look at you know, uh, my last uh, Prime News video if you want to find out why Square might not deliver that this year. I am Nintendo Robo Jans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.